Hey, it's time for VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk, Tech Talk. number 77. Believe it or don't. I can't wait till we get to 100. You know, then then we're going to, you know, balloons are going to fly off and, and it's going to be really something. Uh, <laughs> if you've got a question for George or I or both of us for about your home voiceover studio, because that's what our, our show is about. Throw it in the chat room right now. Jeff Holman is in there patiently waiting for your questions and ready to relay them to us. Plus, we got lots of cool stuff from George, who's been he, you, you've been on the Internet trying to dig deep into finding all the right the stuff internet to tell people. In the last two weeks of crazy requests and whatever I find <laughs> on the socials and just trying to curate the best stuff. All righty. All that and a discussion on why is it supposed to be mono <laughs> on VoiceOver <laughs> Body Shop Tech Talk right now. From the outer reaches, they came. Bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together... From the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Widom, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master. A professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, making the complex simple, debunking the myths of what it takes to create great sounding audio, answering your questions, showing you the latest and greatest in VO tech, and having a dandy time doing it. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt, VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training, J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Well, hello there. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop. Or VO. B-S. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. It is time for Tech Talk where we talk about voiceover tech. Because if it wasn't for the tech, we wouldn't be able to do any of this stuff. No, we wouldn't. We wouldn't have wanted to do this show either. That's true. Well, yeah. And, and, you know, I mean, 30 years ago, I mean, there were a couple of guys that had home studios and they had... Before they had DATs, they had reel-to-reel recorders, and if they were doing, like, promos or imaging for stations, they had to put it on a reel and tape it up and put it in a, in a in, you know, in an envelope and send it in a, on overnight on FedEx or something, and, you know, now it's like, hit record, save, MP3. <clears throat> but there's a little bit more in between there, and getting it right is not that easy if you're not that experienced at it. If you've never done any recording before... But you're a great voice actor and you've always gone into the studio. And now, you know, because of the pandemic where people were forced to be at home, which George and I didn't mind at all because, you know, that's what we do is we help people build home voiceover studios. And they're not as sophisticated as one might think. And they're not as hard as one might think. But it takes somebody who knows what they're doing to explain it to you so that you get it right so that you hit record and have to do as little as possible to get that audition or that job out to your client. And that's what we do because, hey, we know how. Or as we, as I tell my kids, why did I do that? Because I can. <laughs> <sighs> anyway, if you want to work with George, who's, you know, the top in the business, the guy just knows his stuff and he's learned an awful lot from me. Where do you go? <laughs> We learn a lot from each other. Sure age. If you, I know. If you want to work with George, where do you go to get a hold of him? Oh, you head on over to georgethe.tech. Uh, that's my home on the web. That's my business name and my address. 
Uh, and I'm at the, at George the Tech all over the socials. Um, and I can do sound checks to studio designs. Um, if you're in LA, sometimes I might even pop by your studio and do some hands-on, which has been come, become a lot more popular as of late with the lifting of the, the pandemic. Um, so it's been great to serve you guys and I'm going to continue doing it. And I love doing it, but Dan being here in LA, he's been known to show up in your studio as well, as well as working remotely. And you can find him over at homevoiceoverstudio.com. Yeah. You know something I love doing house calls. And that was one of the, when I, when we moved here to LA, uh, set almost six and a half years ago, uh, almost seven years, if you can believe that. Um, uh, the, the best thing about it was I ab was able to go into people's homes, you know, look around, but also help them set up their home voiceover studio. Love sniffing around for like, what's the best place to put a home voiceover studio in here? Yeah. You got a walk-in closet. You've got, you know, an extra spare bedroom. Let's look at the possibilities. Let's see where it is. You can set that up and, you know, taking it from there, asking lots of questions and just getting it. So all you got to do is hit record and be a voice actor. And that's really the, the key to having a great home voiceover studio. Uh, also, if you already set one up and you want to know what it sounds like, George has, uh, you know, he listens to your audio as do I. And on my website, you will find if you scroll to the bottom of the page for the time being until it gets up to the top of the page is my specimen collection cup. And you click on that. It's a Dropbox for $25. I will analyze your audio and as anyone that's ever worked with me doing that, they will tell you it's totally worth it because you see what you're doing wrong. You see what you're doing right. And that's what we're about. So make sure that uh, you're here and you we, we take, avail yourselves of our talents. Anyway, so what's in your tech update this week? <laughs> Back at you. <laughs> um, don't hit your mics, folks. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, right out of the gate, um, a new software plugin has been making a splash lately from Waves, and uh, it's called Clarity VX. And Clarity VX is a, let's just say they want to take some of the wind out of the sails of Isotope RX. Um they are using new technology that they call a neural network to essentially learn what is your voice and extract it out of the noise around you. Um, and it's pretty interesting how it does it. it. It's basically listening, analyzing, learning your voice, like, yeah, literally learning your voice and pulling it out of the background. And they give you, it's a very simple interface. It just has a knob for the amount and then two different possible settings and depending on the severity of the noise there's like a more aggressive and a less aggressive uh, type of processing or as they call it a neural network um clarity vx if you want to try it um it looks like right now on their website they've been playing with the prices <laughs> it was 29 bucks for a while went to full price for a while now with some coupon codes and other things it's back down to 29 bucks so this is probably a good time to grab it and try it out. It, what would you use it for? This would be for people that are recording really in very poor uh, situations. They are uh, trying to get away with it. They're recording in, in a car off of a busy road. They're in a hotel room or they're home with the family and they've got to get this thing recorded. A tool like this will do some pretty amazing stuff to remove background noise. Does it do it completely free of artifacts? It depends, depends on the severity of the noise and uh, it can sometimes cause some little things. So I have my pref preferences. I still, I know you guys have heard me talk about Bertram Denoiser. That's still my favorite when the noise is more of a drone or more of a consistent background noise, but Clarity can deal with random background noise like I've never seen before. And if, uh, if you're banging your head against the wall um, or you're working in something like a tri booth, something very portable and not soundproof, and you've got to pull off that session. It could be the difference between pulling it off and not, and just something to check out and see what you think. Waves Clarity VX plugin. Um, an update on Monterey on Mac OS. 
pretty much everything seems to be copacetic at this point. Now, I'm only running it on my MacBook Air, so I'm not plugging in a ton of peripherals and devices into it, but I have been dealing with a lot of folks with Monterey Max, and at this point, it seems everything's working. Apollo stuff, um, all the plug-in suites, some of them you still have to run your your software, like Twisted Wave or whatever, uh, Audition. You may have to run it in what's called Rosetta mode, which is still a compatibility mode, but I haven't found that to be a hindrance at all. It, the computers now with these new processors are so fast that even when it's emulating an older Intel Mac, it still does things very quickly. So You don't even know it's doing it. <laughs> you really don't. It is seamless. You see it install that, that Rosetta thing one time, the very first time you launch a program that needs it, and that's the last thing you've ever heard of it. It's, it's seamless. Um, so yeah, it's, I would still wait if you, if you're just wanting to upgrade cause you're, you're impatient. I get it. I would still <laughs> wait. If you have two Macs installed on the one that isn't your mission critical studio computer. In my situation, the studio I'm using, the computer I'm using right now is my Mac mini and it's running Big Sur and it will stay on Big Sur until whatever the next thing after Monterey comes out. I'd like to be one full generation behind so that's what I like to do. And I recommend it for a lot of folks who are not up for troubleshooting. So you're like leading from behind. <laughs> yeah, you could call it that. <laughs> um, another topic that came up on the social webs is uh, the, the concept of recording with a safety track. Now, there's a lot of ways to do this. And that can be the basic, which is just um, literally splitting a microphone to two channels, let's say you have a two channel audio interface using the right cable and the right tools. Believe me, you don't want to use the wrong kind of cable here. You could actually damage your mic. Um, but uh, you can split that mic into two channels and in one channel record with that one at a much lower gain. If you're going to use this technology, this, this, this method, you're going to end up with two tracks, one at a higher level and one at a lower level. And the pro of that technique is you really are recording at two different microphone gains. But you have to be careful with phantom power. Remember that your audio interface is outputting power. If you use the wrong kind of cable or splitter, you could cause damage to your equipment. So you do need to be careful with that. But there's other ways to do it. And the thing is, I've tried everything. But I have to say, is it worth it? Because... As a voice actor, are you going to want to deal with the post of it and going, okay, I've got two tracks. Which one should I use? Oh, should I take the two of them and comp them together? In other words, combining them and making them into one? Um, do you want to deal with the post, the post on that? Um, you know, you're going to have to talk to your clients and who you're working with. If you're doing video game work, it could be worthwhile. It could be. Um, to do this because you'll have that safety margin no matter what, hopefully, that you won't clip. But it always starts, no matter how you do it, no matter how clever your equipment is, it always starts with proper gain settings. So you still are going to have to do that part right. I find if you set your gain at a conservative level, um, I know in video games they say peaks around minus 18, you'll see this one a lot. Yeah, that seems really low. But when you're doing very dynamic character voices and stuff, You'll have the headroom, and with 24-bit recording, you'll still maintain the sound quality that they expect. 24-bit recording is pretty much the norm now for recording video game voices, as it is. Um, another thing is the minus 6 dB problem. This it's doesn't a, come up every day or even it's every a problem? week. But I see this. Yeah, I see it. It seems to happen more on Audacity than anything else. And the reason is, I think... Because Audacity doesn't support ASIO sound drivers, meaning that Audacity doesn't get to communicate uh, directly with the hardware. It has to pass through the Windows sound driver mixer system, right? Well, I recently had a client, and I've seen this happen before and found problem fixes in the past, but in this case, I couldn't find one. She reached out to Focusrite because I said, hey, it's their hardware. They wrote the drivers. They're going to know. And the problem was, no matter what she did, whenever the audio got to about minus six, it was just cut off. It was like it was clipping. <clears throat> they told her, 
after a lot of back and forth, she said, and trying this and trying that, their re- the, the, the fix was just reduce your gain so you don't ever go above minus six. <laughs> that was the fix. So what am I saying here? Who's to blame? Is it Focusrite? Is it Microsoft? Why is that even acceptable that uh, a company would actually provide you a workaround to fix their own sound drivers? I find that fascinating. And um, I'll leave it at that. I just don't know what's going on there. And is it going to get better over time with Windows? I only hope so for everybody that still wants to use Windows to record audio. It's just it blows my mind. So you're saying that, you know, in Windows, it's over mod it's it's it, it's not a peak limiter. It's just it's just not letting things go over minus six and it's over modulating if you get too loud or Yeah, if it hits minus six and you just keep adding gain, it's just X. I, w- I wouldn't say it's a limiter because it gets crunchy and distorted, but once you try to get anything above, it clearly is just nope. That that's it. You're you are maxed out. Um and, and you should get a Mac uh, in, in other words. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um speaking of Mac, as we always do, uh the Apple Mac Studio. And I was gonna ask if anybody in the chat or anybody watching now or if you're watching in replay, what's been your experience with the new Mac Studio? I do not have one. I don't expect to have one for the foreseeable future. Um, I did a little search to see what's the deal with the noise level because it does have some pretty impressive fans. And the video I just watched, the the guy had it sitting on his desk in front of him with a, a SPL meter about mm, a foot away, as though it would be if you were in front of it on your desk. And he was getting about 30 decibels, which is not silent. Uh, that is definitely not quiet enough that you could have that inside a booth. Um, for sure not. Um, no. Could you put it on a maybe a cart underneath a desk or maybe on a shelf in a closet or certainly outside your booth? I yes. I was going to say absolutely. in your backyard might be a good place. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it's <laughs> it's not that noisy. It's certainly quiet for considering the power of the machine. But the bottom line is the more powerful the computer you buy, the more powerful the cooling has to be. And so you're always going to be finding that that is it's a rule you can't break. Now, Apple's a genius as a designing quiet cooling systems. They've gotten better over the years. But I was reading comments on this video of of users saying, yeah, you know, the noise that it makes, it's kind of annoying. It's not a dull, it's more like a, it's more of a a little bit of a grating whine. So uh, keep that in mind if you're really excited to get one. And if you do have one, chime in and let us know what it's been your experience with the, the fan noise. At the end of the day, the Mac Mini M1 is really all you need for almost anything because no matter whether you get the mega, mega, ultra $6,000 studio with all these cores and blah, 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 nice. or you buy the bottom of the line Mac, uh, Mac Mini for 600 most of what you do, for web browsing, uh, a lot of the software you run is using one core, one CPU core. And it won't make any difference to you which computer you you won't even notice. Yeah, that so, thing is really designed for for video editors and absolutely, and, you know, people who have to you know have photo large editors of, and that yeah, need massive file sizes and you know, you know and tremendous four screens to do it with. Yeah, <laughs> it's really really overkill. It's exciting, uh, but it's really over really overkill. Um, last thing, real quick, it's just a little gripe. Um, why can't Isotope RX editors? Uh, software convert a file from stereo to mono as part of a batch processing. That's just an open, just an open complaint. If you know how to do this without going out of the batch, let me know. Because some folks are recording and, and mixing down their audio, man, not using the best software, GarageBand, Logic. And some of these just always put out stereo files. And that's not always a good thing. And that leads me into Dan's discussion of the week, which, which is, happens to be why mono, why mono, why is mono? Why do we care about mono? So because why, when we talk to people, you know, and you're talking, you know, and say, this is the other person and you're, you you're talking in a natural way as a voice actor, like you should be, you're not talking in stereo. Yes. People have two ears. Uh, and they may perceive you from different directions, but 
the microphone's only hearing you from one direction. It's not, it's not, you know, what, what's it called? Binaural. You know, there's that, there's that binaural, one microphone right. we saw it at, at, at NAM a few years ago and they, they, they're still making it where it's a binaural uh, microphone that will capture you from two different directions. Yeah. Well, now, it if looks you don't like a head, a right, human it, head it, with it, microphones in the ears. Yeah. I mean, I can see where that might be necessary, you know, if you're doing virtual reality things and stuff like that, but standard in the industry is one track mono and how many times you know do i do i go into uh let me see if i have this set up here somewhere i know i do uh there it is uh change that i just want to share my screen share screen share the window boom 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 (laughs) and there it is um the thing is is you know a lot of times i will get a file for somebody who will submit something in my specimen collection cup and it comes in like this, which leads me to think one of two things. One, they're using GarageBand or two, they're using Logic because as you were saying, it doesn't mix down into mono. Uh, so because in order designed for music, everybody, <laughs> that's right. You know, I mean, standard in the industry, if you, you know, I, I always like to tell people if you send in a, a, a you know, a, a two track file like this, chances are it's going to get round filed before they even listen to the slate because they're going to see that, well, they're using GarageBand or something along those lines, or they don't understand that it's supposed to be in one track mono. So now in, in, uh, you know, Adobe audition, it's not a big deal because I just get, take the file and I go up to favorites and I'm like, convert to mono. And that's what it does. You know, it's pretty simple and, uh, get that out of there. So, that's the way it's supposed to be. And that's the way I want to hear it because I don't want us to look at both and say, uh, okay, yeah, this the, is the way to see two tracks. Then you have to, as an engineer go, well, okay. Is there stereo content? Is there something different between these two tracks? And then exactly. you think of it differently after that. Right. So the trick is to always record in mono one. So you can see that you, what your modulation is like, and you're not like looking at two tracks, but two, this is the way that the microphone picks us up. There's no need to have it in two track. And, you know, and so, you know, how many times, George, have you and I heard, but I thought stereo sounded better, which, that, or what if it's mono? Why don't I, why don't I only hear it in one ear? <laughs> well, if you record that, it only on the left track, if it's only on the left track. Right. Yes. But, but when you're setting up your, your, uh, your interface, you know, and you look at, you know, and you're setting it up in, in your OS and you're setting it up in your software, make sure that channel one, the left side is says mono. And every time you go into your settings, when you start a new file, it should stay one track mono and all the software will do that except for apparently garage band and logic. Are there any other, other you know, any, any other platforms where you've seen that happen? I used to know a workaround in garage band. It wasn't logical, but it worked. Um, and now I can't do it anymore. So whatever the current versions are, I can't, Logic, there is ways to do it. You know, it's a little bit of, again, it's not, it's not designed to do it. So you have to jimmy it to do it, but there's a way. But um, another, another technical reason why you shouldn't do stereo uh, files is if you compress them into an MP3, let's say you have a 128 kilobit per second MP3, right? A exactly. mono one. Those sound great. Mono 128 sounds great. You take the stereo file and pack it into that same package 128 kilobits per second cuts it the in half, quality it? yeah the quality is audibly degraded it actually sounds worse and it's it's not that subtle so um this is another very good reason to make sure you're always working in mono yeah so do that um we got a lot of questions coming up if you've got a question throw it in the chat room whether you're on facebook whether you're on YouTube, whether you're, you know, if you're watching on our, our website, you can get access to the chat room there as well. Just go into YouTube and relay the question to us and we're going to answer it in the next segment. So, uh, have you got any, any, anything big coming up, George? I mean, you've got your, your office hours and, and a bunch of other things. What do you, what have you been up to to help your clients out? Well, I'm, I'm working on adding more educational content. Uh, I want to have ways that we can 
help people technically without having it always to be a one-on-one. And I love one-on-ones, but I can't clone myself. God knows I've tried. No, just kidding. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's, it's impossible. So I want to make sure uh, there's more ways I can help folks and more affordable ways. And I found the best way to do that is through more educational content. So if you stay tuned uh, at georgethe.tech, you'll see um, I'm adding more uh, what I would call not only webinars, which then are recorded and available to rent, but I'll be adding more modules. And that's going to be just shorter, more concise videos on specific topics, like specifically how to use all the different EQs in Twisted Wave. And there's like six of them. <laughs> so yeah. I'll go right into that in detail um, and that kind of stuff. So stay tuned for that. And uh, that's that's our primary goal right now. Yeah. And, and on uh, May 6th, uh, I'm going to be doing a webinar free for worldvoices.org members. Oh, excellent. Because everybody's like, how do I achieve the standards at Wovo? Uh-huh. Well, well, George and I, and, and a few other people that you may know, wrote those standards because we, nobody had actually established what, you know, modern vo digital recording voiceover tracks are supposed to sound like and different from mm -hmm. the old analog days. So we mm -hmm. totally rewrote those. And these are the standards that we would like people to adhere to. And if you go for studio approval, or if you just want to make sure that your studio is sounding right, how do you achieve those standards? So I'm going to be doing a, a webinar on that on May 3rd, actually, May 3rd, Tuesday, May 3rd. May 3rd. Got it. Yes. And, uh, you know, and so if you're a member of Wovo, it's free. So and if you're not, how do you sign up for it? Well, we're figuring that out. Maybe okay. you should just join. Stay tuned. But yeah, most absolutely. importantly, yes, stay tuned and join world dash world, world dash voices dot voices org. Dot org. Yeah. Absolutely. That's the industry association of freelance voice talent of which I am currently the president and chief executive officer of and, and benevolent dictator. Uh, anyway, we're going to take a break and we're going to get to your questions. You can throw them in the chat room right now. We want your questions in the next half hour so we can answer them and enlighten you on how to get your audio sounding what it's supposed to sound like, which is whistle. All right. We'll be right back after these messages. Don't go away. Hi, this is Bill Farmer and you are watching Voice Over Body Shop. It's great. The Harlan Hogan VO1A microphone. Now, perhaps you didn't know this, but almost all of the equipment we use in voiceover was designed for making music. The VO1A is the only microphone specifically designed and tuned for voiceover. And you're hearing me on it right now. Now, obviously, the VO1A is very popular at voiceoveressentials.com, and Harlan has been running low. Until now. Harlan placed an order for a new supply of VO1As from MXL quite a while ago. Now, manufacturing them wasn't an issue, but getting them to the U.S. was, between COVID and shipping constraints and, of course, skyrocketing costs. Well, happy day, voiceover people. MXL informed Harlan that his order had arrived in Long Beach and was going through required quality control testing of each mic today. And by the way, although it's difficult, Harlan is keeping the price the same despite inflation and logistics costs. So if you've wanted one, now's the time to order your Harlan Hogan Signature Series VO1A voiceover mic today. Go to voiceoveressentials.com. Hmm. Hey, it's me. It's my turn to say thank you, Source Elements, the creators of Source Connect, and to let all of you know that Source Connect is still the reigning king when it comes to software that connects your studio to other studios around the world allowing the studio to record you remotely in real time. Um, well, I know a lot of the work voice actors do is self-record or direct it over Zoom and different types of remote access uh, conferencing softwares. But this is a different thing. This is recording you from afar. They're hearing your microphone in their studio. They're capturing your, their, your audio exactly the way the microphone hears and recording you real time. And this is a very efficient way to work. It most closely emulates the way it would be if you really were in the studio being recorded. And it's, this is why it's so, so popular among producers. They love the workflow. They love the just being having the session essentially locked at the end of your session, already edited and ready to go. This is just 
This is the way the big jobs tend to like to work. So if you want to be available for those jobs and you want to feel like you're, you know, doing that kind of work and prepared for it, you should sign up and get a free trial at the very least, at least be familiar with it and what it requires to use it. So head over to source-elements.com. And if you need help, they're really great with support. And I do it as well. If you need support, you can always visit us, uh, visit, visit us over at georgethe.tech. Okay, time for tech questions right after this. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. Oh, it's you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. Hi, this is Bill Farmer, and you are watching Voice Over Body Shop. It's great. Hey, we're back here at Voice Over Body Shop Tech Talk. George and I are here to answer your questions. And if you got one, throw it in the chat room. We still have a little room for a couple more, but we're starting to fill up. I love how Bill Farmer reminds you to fix your mustache for, before we come back from the break. That's right. It's, <laughs> it's important. You know, and I always do it before the show. You should have seen what it looked like before. It's not it's, singling for a left turn, as you said. No, it is not. The pandemic was not good on this mustache. It was like, <laughs> why bother? Just, nobody's going to see me. But now I can go out in public and, you know, people, hey, I know you. Anyway, uh, let's see here. Let's start off with the one and only Jay Horace Black's question. Go for it. Uh, Jay's question was actually about the tri booth. He was here earlier when we did that last week. Um, what's the conditions uh, that need to be existing to have uh, and to use a tri booth? Um, could this be used as a permanent solution in a home studio if the space is quiet enough? Uh, and then there's a second part I'll answer in a second about the filter. Um, but yeah, it, it does require quiet. This is a 40 pound product. Um, if anybody knows anything about soundproofing or has ever had a soundproof space, and I put that in air quotes because soundproofing is almost impossible to do completely, um, anybody knows that it requires an incredibly heavy, dense structure, something in the order of five, seven, eight hundred, even a thousand pounds or more to, to get rid of the majority of the noise that's going to come in. So the tri booth does not do that. Um, you do need quiet. So that is something you're always going to have to consider when using anything portable that truly is portable, like put in a bag, carry over your shoulder, portable. It's always going to need quiet, no matter who makes it. Um, and then a filter is just a preset or a stack or a rack or an effects chain or whatever the thing is you use that I, that I build some very subtle set, set, uh, settings to make sure that your mic sounds the best it can sound in the tri booth. The tri booth does a very good job, but it's still going to be different, likely, than your home studio. Or it may have something with your mic that could color things slightly, that could benefit from a little bit of a tweak. Sometimes I'll notch out a little at 300 hertz or something like that, just depending on your situation. Just, just a little bit. Yeah, it's all supposed to be just a tad, just a touch. Um, and that's what a filter is. So thanks for asking, Jay. You're, we appreciate it. Uh, Jeff Holman asks, So when you do a video game audition, you stay the same distance from the mic, but just change the gain when you do the shouting parts. Is that right? Yeah, sort of. Because getting too far from the mic while working it can reveal the shortcomings of your booth more. Right? Right. The louder you talk, the more the acoustics of the room you're, work you're working in become obvious. What? These yeah. acoustics? Yeah, these. Well, yeah. You're, in, you're in your apartment there. Mine's way more lively than yours. Your, your whole space is pretty well treated. 
yeah, well, it's then, and that's the way, that's the way it should be. Uh, but you know, it's, this really goes down to one of my important points about good audio for voiceover. And that is microphone technique. There's a couple of different ways you can approach this depending on, of course, the microphone you have and, and what access you have to your gain control. One is, yeah, you can back off the mic. Now, Jeff was saying, it's like, well, does that affect, you know, it, you can hear the acoustics of the room. Generally, if you're shouting at somebody, you're going to hear the acoustics of the room anyway. If you're doing the voice of somebody who's in some ancient archway, you know, taking out some ninjas or some Roman soldiers or something like that, you can yell and, you know, and if it's nice and quiet and you don't have a lot of reverberation, of course, the engineer on the other end can add anything they want to it. Um, but if you back off the mic, you can yell and it's not going to overmodulate as much. Or you can pot your mic down a whole lot so you don't overmodulate. It's nice having the sliders on this. Just pull it back a little bit. Um, so, yeah, you can you can change the gain. Uh, one of the tricks that I, I like to tell people, and I use occasionally myself when doing a, a video game, is record the soft stuff first where you're not yelling and record the loud stuff second. Why soft first? Because if you do the loud stuff, you might actually burn your voice out a little bit, and then it's a little harder to do the soft stuff. Uh, mic proximity is really, really important when you're, you know, when you, especially when you're, you're doing different volumes of stuff. So you can either turn the gain down, move off the mic a little bit more and talk a little bit louder. And it's, you're still going to hear you clear as a bell. Some microphones have, and some uh, interfaces have a 10 or a 20 DB pad on them. If you know how to access that and not have to change the levels, you can always kick off 10 DB off of that and yell into the mic that way. You just don't want to yell really, really close to the mic because we don't yell at people that close to their ears. You want to be able to sound as natural as possible. So that's, you know, it's, it's not a one answer, you know, answer. Uh, there's, it depends on your situation, what the acoustics of the room you're working in are and how much access you have to your interface. You know, sometimes it's like, you know, I always think, you know, set your levels, go hit record and go in your booth and go do that. Or if you have the interface in the booth, you can turn it down or you can do what we used to do in what we call on radio, riding the gain, knowing that you've got two different settings on your input gain, one for conversational and one for yelling. And if you know, you're going to yell, just turn the gain down. And then when you're back, remember to turn it back up. That's, that's, that's not easy. Like if, if that's, no. that's not so bad if you're doing radio, but it's harder when you're acting because right. it's tough to split your brain into those two tasks. Yeah. Which is why we, we tell people to do it that way, because we want you to concentrate on being a voice actor and not being an engineer. Right. right. Exactly. Questions from BC. Yeah. Yes. A couple of them here. Um, um, first one is I have a Rode NTG five. So do I. Uh, can you tell us about how you place your shotgun like this? <laughs> um, this is Goodnight, pretty everybody. much how I do it. <laughs> um, maybe if I bring the camera around somewhat to the side for more of a profile, oops, maybe that would help to get a different perspective. Right. But I'm about this far away. Maybe I get this far away sometimes like this. But that's the placement. I know this isn't helping you guys listening on the podcast, but sometimes there are visual elements to the show. But um, yeah, I, I like a relatively close placement because um, because I am not in a great acoustically treated room and I am not in a very, very quiet space either. So I do tend to be pretty darn close to the mic. But with this kind of a placement, you won't pop it. And that's, that really makes it uh, a lot more um, possible. It makes it possible to be this close and still yeah. get that intimate sound. So. Yeah. Now I, I use a 416 in my booth mm -hmm. uh, because it just sounds good. Uh, but my thing has always been, 
you know, I always have the mic, you know, this is, you know, a studio condenser mic, but those same rules apply as far as I'm concerned. Yep. You want it, you know, the diaphragm at about the height of the bridge of your nose. And you can be, depending on the size of the room you're in, here, we've broken it down into three things. It's either, if you're in a small room, just a fist. If you're in a slightly, you know, regular size four by four booth or something like that, it's thumbs up, thumbs up, like that distance. And if you're in a much larger room, George and I like to get to, you know, Mahalo. It's that one. Uh, with a with a 416 or an NTG5, uh, it should be at about a 45 degree angle, as George is showing you there. And but the diaphragm should be at about the height of the bridge of your nose and your copy down and underneath the same way it is with this particular mic here. And that just works really, really well. If you've got it out of the range of you breathing on it, you don't get plosives. Uh, you'll notice that neither of us are using pop screens. I haven't used a pop screen in years because the reality is, is that pop screens really are. Do they prevent plosives? If you're singing and you're really blasting it really close, yeah, it can do that. Voiceover is not, you're not supposed to be that intimate with the mic unless you're whispering. So if you can be here, this is at the same height as your ears and you're talking underneath and you can go Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, uh, you know, you know, un until you reach Pluto and you're still not going <laughs> to, you're still not going to have a plosive. And that big black screen just tends to remind people that they're on a microphone. And that's when they start talking yeah. louder. And don't over project. The mm -hmm. louder you talk, the more the acoustics of the room come into play. The NTG5 and the 416 are great because they have a very narrow pickup pattern and can eliminate some noise that comes in from the side. Yep, more so than a, a large diaphragm cardioid condenser mic might. Right. Mic. Was that more information than anybody wanted? Well, you oh. know what? It's asked because they still need to hear it. That's right. Um, <laughs> I, number two is uh, I saw a site for a custom Mogami cables. Um, what a right angle connector be good. Um, yeah, if it fits your setup, if you want to have the connector make a right angle out of the microphone and it looks cleaner to you, go for it. It's not hurting anything to do. Nobody it. needs to see how the sausage is made. Yeah, if it's it not going to make you, any difference. That's yeah. fine. Um, can you hear a tonal difference between the Mogami 2534 versus 2549? Uh, no, no, no human being that I know <laughs> could hear the difference between two different mic cables. Yeah. Mishka, um, my, my dog, but maybe, other than yeah. that. <laughs> um, and then number that three kind of is, would you get a longer XLR and just coil up the excess or better to get pretty much the right length cable. Um, I, I would definitely tend to try to get the right length cable. Um, the longer the cable is, the more chance that it could possibly pick up some kind of noise or interference, especially if it's coiled up uh, on the floor. It's very, it's not typical. If, it, if it's a quality cable, like a Mogami cable, it won't matter that much. A cable can be 100 or more feet without any loss of audible quality loss. So as long as it's a balanced microphone cable. Um, but I, I like cleaner wiring with a lot less excess. So I tend to choose shorter cables. Yeah. I, you know, and that's the thing with, you know, I'm the same way. It's like, unless the mic has to be far away, you know, what's it, you know, it shouldn't be any more than 10 feet away. And if it's like, you know, on a, you know, a reticulated arm, how far does it have to go? You know, uh, you know, six feet, 10 feet, you know, if you get a 10 foot cable, you're not going to have all that much excess. So no, and six and, to 10 feet is fine. Right. 25 but, feet, probably too long for most home studios, unless you're, you're literally in your closet down the hall oh, and that's yeah. where you have your mic. Right. And we've done that. You know, it's like, yep. you know, just tell people don't trip over it. You know, it's going <laughs> up the stairs and you know, down <laughs> yeah. the hall in a closet and, but it still works. That's why a balanced cable is so fantastic because it can right. run for a hundred miles and you're not going to have any single loss. <laughs> Yeah, so. they, they work. They do that job very well. Yeah. Grace Newton. I just got Twisted Wave and I'm getting familiar with it. Good for you, Grace. Uh, can I run RX-8 Elements with it? Yes. Absolutely. It's a Use it as a plug-in, right? Yeah, you can. You can run it as a plug-in or you can run it as its own thing. Um, 
uh, unfortunately, RX and Isotope does not recognize Twisted Wave as a as a as a software that they support. Uh, neither does Waves, um, but it certainly does, and we have hundreds of people using it. So yes, yes, you can. Yeah. Uh, part two, you get that because you're the Source Connect guy. Oh, okay. I'm looking into getting Source Connect. Uh, is mapping required with a MacBook Air M1? Does um, have anything well, to do with it? Yeah, it's port mapping is not anything to do with the computer itself. It has more to do with the router you use and the software you use. So in this case, Source Connect standard, which is the version that you would be using, does still uh, require port mapping to have the most reliable possible connection. Think of it as an open gateway, an open port, they call it port mapping, uh, an open hole in the network that's specifically opened up just for Source Connect on that computer. Um, but everything else inside this side of email, web browsing, Skype, Zoom, and maybe a few other things, all the other little ports or openings in your network are closed and kept closed. And that's what keeps your network secure. So um, some routers will just negotiate and say, well, all right, I'll let it, I'll let it slide. I'll let you through. <laughs> other routers are like, but I don't know anything. And they just let everything through. And then some routers go, no, you shall not pass. And then no thing comes through. So it totally depends on your router and your network, not really the computer that you're using. Mm, yeah. I, I think that's one of the most intimidating things about Source Connect is, is the port yeah. mapping. Uh, but they do it for free. If you, if you have wow. a subscription or a one-time license, they will handhold you through that. They will remote in and set it up for you as part of the purchase cost. Their support has really, really matured, especially the last couple of years. So... Don't worry so much about it. All right. You get the one from Aaron Anthony. Here. All right. Aaron says, uh, does Wave Clarity RX work with Audacity? I believe it should. I mean, it's, it's a standard VST plugin or AU if you're on Mac. And uh, I have not tried it with Audacity. But um, for free, you can demo it and find out for yourself and report back. So let us know. How, what you find if you've been able to uh, use it with Audacity. All right. Yeah. Audacity, I mean, it, it has a lot of, it, it, it does an awful lot for not paying anything for it. It does. It's, it's it does. pretty amazing. Uh, let's see here. Alicia Hurley, who's watching on YouTube, she says, I'm still using Mojave on my Studio Mac. Should I upgrade? This is a, this is a loaded question. Okay. So now you've been on Mojave for a while. Yeah. Um, Mojave is interesting. It's one of the last OSs from Apple that supported 30, I think it's 32 bit applications. So you may still be running old software, let's say Microsoft Office 2004, maybe. <laughs> People tend to never upgrade Office ever because it just works. Um, if you're running older versions of Office, when you upgrade, they're gone. You're going to have to upgrade them immediately. Um, so there's going to be software that you may be upgrading right away if you do upgrade from Mojave. Um, if it, it also depends on the computer, how old it is, um, et cetera. There's a lot of things to consider. And if you want to know all those answers, I would re recommend that you have a cons consultation with me or Dan. We'll go through every software and hardware you're using and make sure that there's, we'll take all the questions off uh, out, of, out of there so that you're not going to be concerned that an upgrade is going to break anything. Um, I would go, if I was going to upgrade to anything right now and all the conditions were right, I would say Big Sur would be the OS that I would upgrade to um, from Mojave. Um, but be aware that you may break some old apps um, because anything 32-bit is no longer going to run uh, once you move past Mojave. Yeah, I've never had an issue with that. With any, well, you're it, probably it, not using Microsoft Office. i have darn right I'm not. My yeah. wife is, and she's like, it's lost my Outlook. It's not, I can't, my, there's 5,000 emails that oh, I can't find. And I'm I like, hate Office I so told bad. you to get a Mac. I told you not to use this, but that's I hate like, Office. Well, you can run Office in the cloud. So like yeah. if you're really frustrated and you don't want to run the app or install it, you can run it completely in the cloud. It's called Office 365. You can also get... Um, it's called OpenOffice, 
completely free. Yeah. Um, also, if you're on a Mac, you have Pages, which is Word. Uh, you have Keynote, which is um, PowerPoint. Uh, you Works have Numbers, great, which is, uh, you know, um, sorry, uh, Excel, Excel. Yeah. essentially. Right. Yeah. So there are tools that can take the place of, of Word, but uh, this is probably one of the most common questions and things that I deal with is that dealing with Microsoft <laughs> Office uh, and, and more than anything else. Get a Mac. It just solves so many problems. Yeah. Sorry. I Sorry mean, yeah, it's, 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 it's when we're on these old versions of, of software that are legacy. You know, again, 2004 version of Office, 2009 version of Office, 2013 version of Office. It ain't going to run on a modern 64-bit Mac. Yeah. I got time for one more question here. Now, I didn't get to go to VO Atlanta by choice, uh, but you did. And Maurice Scott asked, George, oh, yeah. what is the sound panel that you had at VO Atlanta? <laughs> I think it's, uh, I think it's right here. Okay. Show and tell. I like show and tell. That's why I have <laughs> stuff all over the place. Oh, that thing. Here oh. it is. At the last minute when I packed, I, uh, I had a little space in my suitcase. I had a full size suitcase. I was going to say you had a lot and of just, space in your suitcase. <laughs> that's it. And I just, uh, I stuffed it in one half of the suitcase, just kind of curved it around the inside of the, it fit in there fine. Um, this is it. This is a this is a prototype product from Studio Bricks. I I don't know when they're shipping um, yet. They're the only thing. The only place you're going to see these right now is, is inside a Studio Brick booth. Um, the newest, most current ones they're shipping. They're called the Eco Line or Eco Model. All use these now, and um, I like them because they are not toxic in any way. There's no smell. They're, they're not, it doesn't hurt your skin if you touch it. You don't need to wear gloves. It's not foam, so it doesn't have that foamy feel. It has better sound absorption, acoustic absorption than foam of the same thickness. It's got a lot of pros, I'd say. Um, and you can, it's not that easy to cut, but you can cut it into smaller segments to fit into weird spaces. So I'm hoping when they release it, they release them in like a, like a four by four grid. You know, four mm. by four, small pieces to make right. it easier to um, fit it into a lot of like weird little spots, like treating a closet or right. a little tiny linen closet and you want to fill in all the shelves, you know, I yeah. feel like that would be ideal for that. Outstanding. Yeah. Well, believe it or not, that's all the question. And uh, <sighs> Boom. it's pretty amazing. I actually have to deal with the studio bricks tomorrow. Somebody apparently built it in their little gaps and stuff. So oh, I'm, they didn't level it. They didn't. I said, you got it. It's the floor level. Got to have a level floor. So I'm heading over there tomorrow with a, my big rubber mallet and we're going to get that thing straightened out and soundproof. <laughs> have fun. I, yeah, I, I know. It's going to bring a few hockey nut. pucks and, and things like that. It's, <laughs> it's got so leveling that. feet. You just need a wrench that you can reach, hopefully reach enough of the feet with your, with your wrench to, to level yeah. the thing. So okay, it's, uh, I'm bringing my level. Cause that's okay. going to be, cause that's what it is. Is if it's not level, it's, you're going to have, you're gonna have those gaps. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. all righty. Uh, again, if you've got any questions for us, uh, you can always write to us at the guys at VOBS.tv. Got to give Sue a little bit of warning. So, um, <laughs> anytime you can write to us at any time. And when we do uh, tech talk, if you write it in, it gets, gets to the, the front of the queue and you get, you know, so you can like hear the answer and then you can go. But then you'll miss the rest of the other great questions on the show. So <laughs> it's really important that, you know, you, you hang out for the whole time. But if you, something occurs to you in the middle of the week and I'm like, oh, you know, I should ask Dwayne and George that, you write to us at guys at VOBS.TV and we will get it on, well, we can't say on the air anymore because. <laughs> on the stream. On the stream. <laughs> we have to change all the nomenclature about all this. It's, <laughs> you know, because we're not broadcasting. Well, but we are broadcasting but we're streamcasting streamcasting narrow casting <laughs> yeah well with, with us a little bit more narrow than some other things but uh, <laughs> anyway thanks for all your questions but george and i'll be right back after these really important messages and give you more information that you need to help you with your career so don't go away we'll be right back before time began there was vobs.tv watch or else 
Hey there, I'm David H. Lawrence the 17th, and with my company VO Heroes and my team of coaches and my community of voiceover talent, we guide voiceover actors along their journey. And you may be watching VOBS here, uh, and not nearly as far along as many of the other people who are watching. You may not even have started yet. And we actually specialize in helping you do just that. So if you're watching all the stuff going on here on VOBS and going, I have no idea what they're talking about. I don't know, but I really want to do this. I'd really like to help you. Please go to VOHeroes.com slash start. That's VOHeroes.com slash start. And you can take our Getting Started in VoiceOver class, which tells you everything you need to get started as a voice talent. And I'd love to hold your hand along the way and help you with that journey. Again, voheroes.com slash start. That's voheroes.com slash start. In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. Voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on The VoiceOver Body Shop. All righty, we're back to say goodbye, because we still have a couple of minutes here, but we're going to use them wisely. Uh, next week on this very show, we will have another great guest. I'm talking to a couple of people that might be really interesting. And then I think in June, when I come back from my vacation, we will get back in the studio and I can look up people's nostrils Imagine. again and ask them questions and, you know, it'll be great. Um, anyway, our donors of the week are Jonathan Grant, Christopher Epperson, Sarah Borges, Philip Sapir, Tom Pinto, Shelley Avellino, George Whitham, George's dad. That's right. Brian Page, Patty Gibbons, Rob Ryder, Greg Thomas, a doctor voice. That's uh, Dr. Carlson, I believe. Nathan Carlson. Uh, Antland Productions, our good buddy, Uncle Roy. Shauna Pennington Baird. Martha Kahn. Don Griffith. Trey Mosley. Diana Birdsall. And Sandra Manwiller. Uh, once again, you need help with your home studio? You come to the right place. Got to just talk to one of us. If you want to work with me, you can go to homevoiceoverstudio.com, and I'll be happy to speak with you, and maybe we can set up a consult. Or you can talk to George over at georgethe.tech. And I finally got finally. around offering a coupon code. <laughs> uh, so if you uh, book a service with any of us, uh, that's a booked service or a webinar service. It doesn't work for a lot of the other non-offline services. But you can use a coupon code at checkout. And for 10% off, you use the code VOBSFAN2022. Hmm. So that'll give you 10% off your service. And actually, I think I have it set up to use multiple times. So you can use it on the next one if you want to. So anyway. Cool. You there going you on Groupon? Go. You going uh, on Groupon? <laughs> no, I've never done a Groupon. I'm kind of scared to do a Groupon, to be honest. I always hear like stories of like a, an avalanche of like orders coming. And you're like, oh my God, I can't handle it. Yeah. Yeah. And and mostly it's for the stuff on Groupon. It's all for liposuction or something like that. <laughs> or cupcakes. That's what I want. Discount liposuction. They have liposuction <laughs> and cupcakes. And cupcakes. <laughs> they feed into each other perfectly. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, we need to thank our amazing sponsors who have been with us over the years and help us get this show on every week, like Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. VOHeroes.com, VoiceActorWebsites.com, and, and JMC, JMC Demos. Demos. Uh, special thank yous, of course, to other people who help make this show happen. 
Jeff Holman in the chat room, our amazing technical director who works all day and then every other Monday comes into and, and, and just makes it perfect here. Sue Merlino, our technical director, and of course, Lee Penny for just being Lee Penny. Uh, that's going to do it for us this week. And thanks for joining us. And, you know, this is not an easy business. Voiceover is very, it has so many different parts to it, but if your audio is good, that's what's most important. And the bottom line is if it sounds good, it is good. I'm Dan Leonard and I'm George Whittem. And this is voiceover body shop or VO. B S Tech Talk Tech Tech Talk 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 We'll see you next week guys have a good later